how would you say your approach has um, changed in these years to teaching and administrating? Because I can say, myself being a graduate of Kasura High School, that your approach is very, how shall I say, you don't try to m micromanage people. Like, your hair should be like this, your shoes should be like that, your tie should be done up like this. Of course, there are rules. I mean, we have a uniform at school and what have you. But um, I, I believe this is still the case. I, I could be, I could stand corrected that um, in Kaswe, boys are allowed to wear studs. They are allowed to wear earrings. They are allowed to um, have cornrows. And if their hair gets as long as mine, then the only requirement is that they tie it. And of course, I always had a beard, of course, out of religious reverence, but of course, others also grew their beards and so on and so forth. And this might seem very, it comes as a shock to many people that this is an international school and we allow all this to happen. But the crux of the matter is I've spoken to a lot of people outside and a lot of former teachers of Kaswe, and they always have one thing to say is that the students at Kaswe were the best behaved. And I believe it ties in directly to this lack of micromanaging people and allowing them to really be themselves and see the folly in some of their actions by their own account. Was this you from the beginning when you started teaching or is that something that you developed later on, maybe after you came to Botswana? You know, if I seriously have to think about it, I, I think in a way or in a sense, it, it must be from uh, how I was raised because uh, the schools that we went to during the apartheid era were very militaristic. We had to walk on the left-hand side with your bag in your right hand. Mm -hmm. If your hair, if you're a boy and your hair touched your ears, you got a hiding. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it was that serious. And, uh, of course, you know, later on, in th then you accept it. I mean, it's the norm and you, you don't step out of it because you don't want to get a hiding. But later in life, you start thinking, you know, does it really matter? Mm -hmm. um, it, it doesn't, because it's the person, it's the human being. Um, I, I must tell you a little story of uh, a, a cricket tour from West. I was at Westwood International School, as you well know, mm -hmm. and uh, we took a cricket tour to Australia, and there were quite a few boys who had long hair and had to tie it in a ponytail when they were playing, because mm -hmm. otherwise their hair would be in their faces. And, and it was strange on the way back at Sydney Airport, um, I found uh, a, a rugby tour, a rugby uh, um, team that were also on the same flight as ours, and those boys had been with me in South Africa. And mm. there, of course, it still was still then, mm. uh, short back and sides. And mm. they couldn't help commenting on these kids of today uh, wearing their hair like that, and don't you have problems with discipline, and, you know, serious questions like that. Wow. And the more I, I tried, they, you know, they, they just balked at me. They couldn't believe that this could happen. Uh, wh where does it come from? I, I realized after a while, as I said, that appearance, yes, is important. But to restrict students too much makes them rebellious. You have to give them something to understand that they can also think. They can make decisions for themselves. I, I shall very well remember the first uh, new parent evening we had at Chaswe, and I was yeah. asked this question. We here, was the one parent, uh, that you allow boys to plait their hair. I said, yes, yeah. why not? I was, I was there, just so you know. I was head boy at the time, and I was at the back. I was, uh, well, I was cautiously observing. <laughs> but anyway, you may proceed. Yeah, and uh, I, I could feel the resistance from at least 90% or 80%, perhaps I'm exaggerating, uh, of the audience in front of me that, you know, what is going to happen to our school? I'm sure that that was the question in everybody's mind. This school is going downhill because of the liberal thoughts of, of this new head at this school. Uh, and uh, then the question was asked, will you allow studs for boys in the ears? And my, comment, my answer was, yes, of course. How can I prevent them from putting stud in, studs in their ears if the girls are allowed to? Uh, and I think that, that for the children, certainly, um, gave them the message, you know, we will be allowed. The, the other thing, of course, and there must be another side of this coin, is the expectation. For years and, and many years in my life as an educator, I've believed that it's about expectations. If you expect, if you're a homeroom teacher, for instance, if you expect your students to be sitting down at quarter past seven in the morning, because that's when we start, 
you expect they'll be there. If you expect students to behave in a certain way, they will behave in a certain way. And uh, Moss, you will, you will recall that my one little phrase that I still repeat to every single parent and student that I interview is, we expect the boys to behave like gentlemen and the girls to behave like ladies. Absolutely. And, and the rest falls into place. You don't sure. need to publish lists of mistakes and uh, transgressions that students can, um, can do. I mean, you, ca you cannot do that. Awesome. Uh, so... What you commented on was Khaswe students had this reputation when they come in contact with other schools when we travel. Uh, the principals of the other schools will comment on, your kids are so well behaved. And uh, you will recall, Moss, I never forced students to behave well. I expected yeah. them to behave well. I expected them to be proud of their school of and course. make everybody proud. Yeah. And that is so... That is so important. It's all about expectations, and I cannot repeat this uh, more than, in, you know, than, I, than I'm doing. Of course. Um, and that made my life a pleasure as well, because I did not need to be this policeman. I did not need to be di this dictator. I, I, I am absolutely positive that dictators can't sleep at night because they have to think of the next way of enforcing people to do things yeah. or forcing people to do things rather than expecting them and expecting that it will happen. Of course. Um, if, if I can move on from, from students to teachers as well. Uh, I, I was a teacher for most of my life and an administrator only in the last section. And for me, the principles that stood out were the principles that allowed you to be yourself, that allowed you to live your subject, that did not check on you all the time, that did not expect lists and tick lists and whatever every single day, but gave you the freedom to be who you are and to transfer the knowledge in your specific way because we're all different. We all know that people learn differently, so why can't people teach differently as well? Yeah. And, and then the results will come. 